Tana is a, a new member of the New York Artist Circle. Um, she is an award-winning um, visual artist. Her work, uh, which comments on contemporary culture, uh, includes printmaking, photography, installation, and over 22 limited edition artist books. She's had over 20 solo exhibitions in the US and Canada, and many group exhibitions. She's received numerous grants, including Paula Krasner and two New York Foundation for the Arts grants. She's done residencies at so many places, McDowell, Yaddo, Banff, Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, and it goes on. And in addition to all of this, back in 1974, she was the co-founder of the Women's Studio Workshop in Rosendale, New York, um, and just from off of their website, the Women's Studio Workshop envisions a society where women's visual art is integral to the cultural mainstream and permanently recorded in history. A beautiful mission. Um, Satana is going to speak with us about um, the workshop, its history and its programs. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's uh, great to be here, a wonderful group of people. And uh, so should I just start by sharing a screen? Uh, yes. So let me just uh, also co-host you so that you can easily share the screen. OK. Great. Great. OK. Uh, let's see. Uh, slide check. OK. So I prepared a slide presentation because as a visual artist, I always find it easier to look at images. And uh, I apologize for my accent and I try to slow my speech, even though I prepared a lot of uh, images for you to look at. So basically we are located in Rosendale, New York, in the Hudson Valley, 90 miles of New York City. This is a view of Rosendale from the trestle. It, Rosendale was a mining town, cement mine is known for cement mining industry, natural cement, and cement has been used for building of uh, Brooklyn Bridge and New York Thruway. And the industry was mainly stopped being active with the invention of Portland cement in the 1920s. And the last mine was the Ros Snyder Rosendale cement from in the mid-50s. So, this is Main Street Rosendale, and it looks like a fake like spaghetti western uh, front. And that's because it was a lot of brothels and uh, you know, boarding houses. And it, uh, on one side is a creek, the other side is a mountain. So development is uh, not really a reality. It's a very picturesque town. And this we'll start with the workshop. So next ski workshop is celebrating the 50th anniversary, which is sort of shocking especially to me. So we started as a women's studio collective in 1974 after we finished uh, school. And uh, so here we are. It was by four, our four young artists, the Barbara Lee of Birch and Kalmbach, myself and Anita Wetzel. And uh, <clears throat> basically, we need facilities to work. Um, some of us are based in printmaking and coming out of school, there was very few opportunities for women and also the <clears throat> sort of motivation to start something, our own studio was uh, because we wanted to work with women uh, since we had very few role models. And this is Barbara Birch and she's a generation older and both Anne and Anita, she was a faculty wife and uh, uh, she was introduced by her husband and they worked together and they realized how different it was working with uh, women role models. So we rented the house in Rosendale because it was on the bus line from New York City. And we set up a printmaking studio with borrowed equipment. This etching studio was in the living room. Silk screen was in the basement. We set up a dark room in a pink bedroom. Uh, one of those was like three bedrooms. It was a three-story house. And uh, the latest edition was paper making about four years later. 
and the only space available was the attic and anybody who's worked with processes like paper making knows it should be on the ground floor because of leakage so i was teach so anytime i was teaching a class all i would do is sort of mop up after students to contain the water not ideal situation in order to sort of uh, engage public we, we participate in different activities in the region and i should add we started the organization with a grant 2750 dollar grant from the new york state council on the arts and this, <clears throat> and this was a time when the staff members when the council members would come to your location assess you and sort of speak to you what you are going to do for the public and we at the, the first five or six years we all had held other jobs and this was this was done strictly on, and we lived in building as well. So this was a 24 seven when we didn't, we're not on a job. So I think it's a bear mountain demonstrating paper making in October where the uh, pulp was actually frozen in the, in the morning, not fun. We are printing a fest, uh, postal for the Rosedale Street Festival uh, in August where the screen is drying and this festival is still going on for 40 years later in August. Uh, we would put, uh, also work with different organizations. This is the Floating Foundation of Photography. Uh, uh, located, actually, they're based, they were based in New York, but they came down the Hudson on their barge, and we worked with kids printing T-shirts. And then in 1977, uh, CETA happens. And it's a Comprehensive Education Training Act, that some of you might remember. And uh, there, were mon there was money available to hire people uh, who were unemployed. So as arts organization, we, we applied the county and we asked for five positions to administer programs to establish a WINGS program, women in making gallery spaces, basically curating exhibitions in non-traditional spaces. You have film and video fest, uh, screenings also in places like that, and then publish a book about history of women in Austin County. Well, the county gave us 10 people. So here we are, 20 something employing 10 people. This is the editorial. This is the staff for uh, for the publication of the book about the voices of uh, of women in Ulster County, and so we would do everything from interviews to photographing to writing and printing. So, I'm sorry, can you, do you see that thing on the top? Uh, what is the thing on the top? You don't see. Okay, so we bought a offset press. And when we start us all do it yourself operation. So here we are moving this, I don't know, three, three ton press into a garage behind the house we were renting. And uh, yeah, we're gonna jump a little bit forward. And 19, I mean, we were completely out of space, seven years in, this is 1981. So we bought this building and this was located two hours from Main Street, two miles from Main Street. And this is what we bought. It was a company, the cement company store originally, and then it was transferred to bait and tackle store for the local resort. And it looked like this inside. And you were 20 something, I know you're 30 now. So uh, we transformed it to this. And this is a current view of the first building we really have. And um, since then, this was in the 1980s. And then over the years, we acquired additional property. We are located on Binnie Water Lane. And Workshop right now owns five different buildings. In the front, on the left is the first building, and on the right is the last building we just we finished a couple of years ago. It's the expansion, actually, of the studios we didn't have. So going, to, this is the etching studio. And so basically our facility is located, I mean, we are focusing on pre-making, paper making, book arts, and ceramics that right now is under the process of being renovated. I mean, build a new facility. And um, this is a letterpress studio. And the programs we offer are, I guess you can, you can see that. This residences, internship, art and education, public projects, summer arts institute, and the workshop is a very extensive website. And uh, so what I'll do is, is through the presentation, I'll steer you in sort of where to go to find what you are looking for. 
in new building is a book binding since we, this is one of our major activities publishing artist books another channel and price uh, uh, press that is used for letterpress printing and die cutting so my program this is the residencies which most of you is probably most appropriate for this audience and you can find them on opportunities on the workshop website and there are many opportunities as you can see in different categories the difference between the residency grants and studio workspace grants they're all free but the residency grant you get paid obviously it's a little bit more competitive i'm sorry studio works yeah residency grant you got plans to the studio workspace residency you get free facility and housing but i don't think there's any stipend associated with that so the artists who come to a uh, most of the workshop, it's all from an open call. The juries meet uh, different times of the year for different grants. And uh, it's usually a year ahead of time. You know, th things you have to plan a year ahead of time from application to actual residency. This is Adna Patti printing. She's working on a, actually on a book printing on the letterpress, Vanderk letterpress. It's an intern type, a setting type. It, and in this case, she's using metal type, lead type, to set text for a book project. Papermaking studio. Uh, that is, at the moment, incredibly active. So the, things happen in the way sometimes all the artists want to do silk screen, sometimes they, many of them want to do papermaking. But the advantage of coming to the workshop that you can you apply for one thing, but if you become interested in other things, if it's possible, uh, we are flexible and you will be able to work in another medium and also the staff of the workshop will teach you so sort of what you need to know in order to accomplish your goal. So, Jan Revis, which is the first time working in paper making, working on these abstract pieces. Letterpress Studio. I'm sorry, Silk Screen Studio. Uh, and each studio is about, at the moment, it's about 900 square feet of space. Tiana Bush is working on large scale uh, print assembled in sec So screen printing, you can make a fabric table, which is 16 feet tall, you can, that's the length, I mean, 16 feet in length, that's the length of the fabric you can print. And then quickly, t because Fran asked me to do sort of historical of your this is, so i'm going to show you some of the public projects 50 years is a long time so i'm just going to skip over just a few of them that i consider sort of highlights this is an early project called flying object when we used another postcards to artists offering 100 bucks to create a piece for the local airport not defunct to create an object that floats and flutters it's a one-day event and Artists responded, and some of them did very elaborate things like this bra, others did very sort of more ephemeral things. And, the, and we occasion we do exhibition, I mean, at different times. This is our 16th anniversary exhibition when we invited artists to be part of the workshop to create this large book. And it's a, so here's a page from the book. 1984, we, we connected with five women's arts organization across the country and invite them to comment on the topic. And this is the opening of the workshop. Basically, we asked them to select, I forgot how many, five or six artists to contribute to the topic. And we would assemble it as a eight, nine by 11. It had to be a certain size. And then they would it became a catalog, Xerox catalog, and then it would travel around the, to all the sites and it opened up the workshop. Scarlet Letter was a response, it was a national call. We accepted everything that came to response to the, in the 1990 to the famous NEA4 and censorship. So that was how to define censorship. And actually, it was also the beginning of the AIDS crisis. So we asked the audience, and people coming to the show to pay 50 cents to enter and wear rubber gloves. And we showed everything that came in. This, this was in Woodstock at the Kleinert Art Center. Here's a, I guess it was the Gulf War too. So another piece, Saddam and Bush fighting with penises. And we invited Dana Hennis to work with the local 
used to create these snowflakes for a festival and uh, the mylar flakes four foot in diameter. And then the, there was a light attached for each member, each person living in Rosendale. So it was 5,000 lights and then there was a parade. So, so all of these activities are sort of to make, to, to fulfill our mission where not only we work as professional artists, but we also try to engage, engage the community, uh, bring the art to the public. Uh, so it's out of focus. This is a uh, rhino. Uh, we have commissioned artists to do a public art project, it's a little bit in the history of Rosendale. And we tried to do a donkey, but so dealing with the cement mining history and because mule, uh, mule, mules were being originally used in the, in the mines. Well, that became very controversial by the, by the town board. So we settled on a rhino and this became a kiln and the artist uh, worked with uh, local kids to create tiles for the community center celebrating the history of Rosendale. Then it was fired in the, in the kiln. The, the, the sculpture still exists at the rec center, but they made us cement the kiln, considering it dangerous. So it's just a sculpture at the moment. This is probably 30 years old. This is a project done about seven years ago. Yeah, this is called August Art, where we got our town grant from NEA to commission artists to create sculpt to create intervention on the on the original rail trail, which is now walk, walking and recreational trail. This is the trestle. You can see the same view behind it of the town. And so we invited artists, and this is uh, Margaret. Mar Let's see, Margot Walters from Canada, and she created this amazing outfit with a blend into the landscape. So There's about fifteen artists involved. This is another another one of hers. But, and she were the performers of lie there all day. And this was this uh, was an opening by the festivals for the entire month of August. This Emily's speech she recreated the uh, architecture of Main Street Rosendale as these buildings walking up and down the trail. This is Joy Taylor, the regional artist who wrapped this railroad tile that has been dumped when they originally took that took up the tracks thirty years or twenty years ago. She wrapped them as these relics uh, next to the rail trail. It's also her piece wrapping these trees. This is piece on myself and Andy. This is called Golden Rule. And we let it in sand uh, every day, one of the 14 tenants from major religion. And then people would walk and walk and run on it, and it would sort of dissolve the drain. So this was our project for uh, that month. Great exercise. You don't have to go to the gym and just do this every day. <laughs> um, so it was the last big, big public project we did. Uh, let's see. About five years ago, we opened a new building and it's connected by a gallery and that has this 20 foot wall. Uh, so we started this program and it's a mural uh, grant for an artist to, to execute this mural. It's 10, I think it's 12 feet by 20 feet. So I just work on the, on the mural and it stays up for a year. I think we have done like five or six murals since its inception. And these are all from open calls. Excuse me. WSW started publishing artist books in 1979 and Right now, we have published over 270 artist books. Uh, so every year, about five, average five books get published. And uh, this is an exhibition we had about 10 years ago, the Grolio Club, curated by Kathy Walkup from California. And this was celebrated uh, on publishing. And here's the installation. I don't know if any of you caught it, probably not. Um, so she selected maybe 40, art, 40 books to be in the exhibition. There was a catalog accompanying that. So I'm going to show you quickly a uh, few of the early books. Uh, so the public, the, the, the kinds of books we publish is very wide and range. And usually, if you are coming for residency, it should be using one of the facilities we have available. So this is the first artist book that was actually pub, uh, created by interns. Now I'll talk about that program and after this. And uh, we were invited for this statewide conference to explain to the audience, 
audience of educators what's an artist's book. So we had two interns talk about that and it's a silk screen book with this insert about uh, sort of giving you a more conceptual basis this is what an artist book could be. And um, this is another publication by Tana Wilson called Stories Behind Bars. And she basically uh, took the, uh, told these stories. She's the interpreter at the, in the local court system. And so she would just publish, write things down, rewrite it to make it more and uh, write these, these stories. This is by Angela Lawrence. Okay, to back up, to, to publish a book, you don't have to be a book artist. So some of these people have never done a book, other people are it's their primary medium. So it's really based on the idea and your vision. So Angela Lawrence is a book artist, and this is called Latex, and this text on print is latex uh, strips. And so you read it, and then you stretch it, and the meaning changes. Because the problem is this book is that no longer exists because latex dissolves over time. So you stretch it and snaps. So. Tamiya Arash is printing her portfolio of prints called Momo Tara Peach Boy. These were photo etchings. 26 Plants by Susan Mills is uh, based, inspiration was uh, Ed Rocher 26 gas station. So she chose 26 different uh, sort of wild indigenous plants and uh, made this paper with. Uh, die cutting of the, of the, tell you the origin of the paper. And here they are, this is Kenaf, so these are interns harvesting the Kenaf. We used to have, a, a, we have a plot, and we used to actually have another program that right now is dormant, doing fibers for paper making. Uh, this Susan, Susan with her pulp ready to make paper. This is Clarissa Sly working on Wrongly Body too. So Clarissa is a photographer, book artist, and she was, uh, this is a book about uh, Ellen Croft, light skinned black woman escaping the South slavery with her darker skinned husband, as well as documentation of um, a friend of hers who was, doing sex, uh, who was going through sex change. This is early on during the transgender move, transgender conversation, which is before that. So the question she is asking is, you know, if black could be white and male could be female, where does she stand as an African-American uh, woman in a society? Um, so that's all the artist books I'm gonna actually show you. How are we doing on time? Okay, quickly. Uh, one of our ongoing, long-established programs is bringing kids to the studios. And we have sort of a unique program where the, artist, where the students work with an artist who is in residence, and they come for the full day in each studio. So they come for four, four sessions, and you can see they get very excited making paper. Uh, and this is, this is working, working on dry point etching in the etching studio. We have some prints. And then we do an exhibition and uh, sort of celebrate. And this one actually right now at the workshop, should anybody wish to come and visit us, it's only a two-hour bus ride from New York. Uh, in the summer, it's the only time we actually teach classes uh, when we don't have residencies, and we invite artists from around the country to come and teach the specialty. Uh, this is Shirley Thurston. These are five-day intensive, all day with the access before and after to the studios. They are small classes. They're usually limited, depending on the process, six to eight people. And uh, you just learn the six screen studio and you just are immersed in the process for the entire week. Um, tape making studio. And we also have taught workshops abroad. At, uh, so this was in Tuscany, in Morocco, and in Scotland, actually. And it was, this is the first time since the pandemic we are going back to international uh, travel. So I'll be teaching a workshop next month in the Rural Lighthouse, which is uh, in the northern part of Scotland. And this is actually taught it. This will be a, I taught it 10 years ago, and then it changed hands. So we'll be teaching it again. And internship. 
I consider internships one of the seminal programs of the workshop. They have the most impact on the artists because these are young, young artists coming from under, usually undergraduate or graduate degrees coming to spend six months. They get paid and so you access in housing. Here is a recent group of interns. Usually there are three, four in the summer. There's a fifth month if we have uh, somebody who's interested in providing, you know, in catering lunches. And they work on everything from uh, production of artist book. And here's a bunch of interns. At the end, they have the exhibitions because they're expected that we expect them to create work during the during their internship. And that's it. Okay, maybe before noon, before 11. Uh, so this is our website. And uh, just check it out. Also, I forgot to mention that this is the artist books. Every single book we have published is on our website. And you can uh, look it up. It tells you which collections they are in. Uh, we have many books at the New York Public Library, uh, in the print and uh, photography uh, department, and all around the country. There's, there, there's over 300 collections that collect or have holdings of artist books, and I think there's probably 15 rep repositories that uh, these are institutions that collects, collect all the books and have all the, the entire holdings. That's it. I hope. Thank you so much, Tana. This has been amazing. We were talking in the breakout rooms about what motivates us and hearing about this amazing program and what you created with uh, the other artists and women is so inspiring and um, motivating. Um, just going to, uh, let's stop the share so we can get back online. Um, we just have a few minutes. Does anyone have any questions they would like to ask um, about uh, the women's um, about the workshop in 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 Rosendale, or uh, the internships, or the residencies, or there's just so many things. I don't even know where to start, and we only have a little time. Yes. I have a, a question, not a question, but Titania, I think you should know that I did see the exhibition at the Gorilla Club. And Great. It was fabulous. It was really a superb uh, exhibition of the work that you do there, and I attended a lecture. So bravo. Thank you. I have a question um, about the residencies. Okay. Um, I I have been a printmaker, but haven't worked in prints for quite a while. Part of it is access to equipment. And I'm curious when someone applies, like I'm always torn about it. Would you, pref in applications, is it better to just show current work with, even if there's no printmaking that's current, or is it good to do a mix of previous work that shows some background? Do you have a sense? I would say you should show your current work um, because usually I think all the applicants, this is a kind of description, short description you have to provide. So it has, it, and that's where you can address your interest in the medium. And I think it doesn't make sense to show your work from 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Right. Okay. Thank you. And also I should point out, one of the founder has passed away two years ago and we have established a residence in her name that is focused on mature artists. And um, because a lot of our artists, I must say, are quite young. And so that's something that's, of course, that I'm very, very aware of. I'm no longer, I'm retired. So I'm not actually involved in the specifics of any of the programming at the moment, I mean, anymore. Uh, but there's a residency, it's Anita Bessler residency, and it's specifically for mature artists over 40, 45, I think. I, I was actually at a residency with Anita many years ago in Spain. Wow. And, she, and she talked a lot about the workshop. And I haven't been, I've always meant to come, but, but yes. But definitely, you know, it's really a nice trip. It's a beautiful area and it's an easy bus ride. Um, <clears throat> Tana Sima is asking, are you full up for teaching opportunities for fall, winter? We do not teach fall or winter. The only time workshop offers work, uh, offers teaching opportunities is in the for the summer session. 
because during the year the studio has had dedicated to artists and residents. Mm -hmm. and do, you have, uh, do you have programs for people who want to learn printmaking? I mean, uh, the last time I did printmaking was 50 years ago in college. Summer. That's the it would come for summer. Uh, I mean, we would take a workshop during the summer. Uh, I want shops over and it's and it's on the summer arts institute at the, on the website. Uh that usually comes out in January. So some of the classes are, I'm sure are full now. And uh if you want if you want it, I mean the workshop does offer when possible individual instructions that you have you, you have to just contract with the workshop. Uh but I think the studios are so busy these days that you know there's a, there would be a time thing and availability of staff to to do that. So I can't really address that how much of that we we do now. But I would say if you want to learn, if you want to get back to printmaking, any aspect of it, taking the workshop is really a great immersion experience because it it I mean you, you it just teaches you whatever you need to know because most of the workshop assume you don't you, you don't don't assume you have an experience. Some people do, some people don't. It's, it's probably 50 50 or it just breaks out differently many people haven't got, done it in you know a long time ago is uh, uh, your ceramic studio open or under renovation right it's actually under our ceramic, <laughs> ceramic studio is under construction <laughs> we uh, are building a new we have raised most of the money to build a new i don't know seven thousand square facility because it was in the basement and we were evicted by the by the inspector because there's only one egress so we, we have been functioning in the ceramic studio on the back porch of the building and i there might be something for the summer i haven't really looked at that schedule but the, of, we hope in a year where the facility will be open it might be a year and a half excellent thank uh, you um fran i was i was in the workshop 14 years ago in may mm -hmm. so i really had a great time uh initiating a whole body of work so the month long was fabulous. I feel like I'm I'm interested in a new visit. <laughs> so yes, yeah. I think many of us are after this presentation. Um, <laughs> it is a little after 11 now, so we have to um, draw to a close. Big round of applause for Tana. Uh, thank yeah. you. Um, thank you for joining our group and our website. Thank you. Um, and um, this has been a great meeting. Um, I think um, uh, we will see you again in June on the 8th. Yeah. I should also say the workshop is an Instagram and Facebook and uh, but Instagram, all the informations are listed. You can also join a mailing list and so you, you can get information. And oh, that's happy. great headlines come up so you would be aware of that so just check it out and uh, if you have any question contact me or contact the workshop <laughs>